Hi biologists. Let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to explain the effect of pH and temperature range on enzyme activity. What does this mean? What are we trying to understand? Well, it's very straightforward. You just have to be able to explain the effect of pH and temperature on the rate of enzyme activity. Let's sort the effect of pH and temperature on enzymes by first looking at the pH scale. What do we know about the pH scale? The pH of a solution refers to its acidity or basicity, basically whether it is acidic, neutral or basic. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. Values less than 7 are acidic, values greater than 7 are basic, and neutral is 7. What is the effect of pH on enzyme activity? All enzymes have a pH at which they work best. Even a slight change in pH will cause enzyme activity to change. This is because the enzyme's shape is affected and thus it will be inactive. An enzyme with a changed shape is said to be denatured and it cannot function. Most human enzymes work best or have an optimum activity at a pH of 7. As a matter of interest, the pH of animal blood is 7.4 and even a slight change can cause health problems. Other human enzymes have different pH values for optimum activity. For example, pepsin is a stomach enzyme. We met this before. It is a catabolic enzyme. It breaks down proteins to peptides. Because it acts in the stomach, the pH at which it works best is approximately 2. Let's look at a graph of the effect of pH on enzyme activity. Everyone in the audience needs to be able to understand this graph. Take note that the pH is along the bottom or along the y-axis, ranging from 0 to 13, or we can put in 14 here. The rate of enzyme activity is up the side or up the y-axis. We can clearly see that the enzyme works best at a pH of 7. This is because the tippy top of the mountain here corresponds to a pH of 7. It works over a narrow range, approximately from a pH of 6 to 8. So if we can just drop a straight line down, we will hit pH of 6 and a pH of 8. Enzymes are very sensitive to changes in pH. Outside this range, enzyme activity quickly falls. This is because the enzyme loses its shape and becomes denatured. If this was a graph for pepsin, the stomach enzyme we already mentioned, then the graph shape would look the same. But the rate of enzyme activity would be the highest at a pH of 2. So we could sketch that in as best we can, showing enzyme activity happening best at a pH of 2. For those of you able for a little bit more, let's look at this in a bit more detail. The pH values along the x-axis are the independent variable, whereas the rate of activity up the y-axis is the dependent variable. When interpreting graphs, I usually go hill walking. I came up with this idea to help people understand graphs a little better. Basically, you say where you are going. You go as far as where the line changes slope. You describe what the ground is like underneath your feet and give the reason why. My hill walking trick can be used when interpreting graphs in all subjects. Let's see this in action. We will start our hill walking journey at pH 0 
and we will walk as far as pH 4.5. This is where the ground or the slope of the line starts to change. So we will tell the examiner where we went. So you go from a pH of 0 to 4.5. Then we make a comment on what the ground is like under our feet. So we have no rate of reaction and then give the reason why. There is no rate of reaction because enzyme shape is fully lost. It is denatured and has lost the ability to function. So we will just write down shape lost. So now we have described the change in pH, what's going on and giving a reason why. Now continuing with our interpretation or our hill walking. We will go from a pH value of 4.5 to a pH value of 7. So tell the examiner where we went. So from 4.5 to 7, where we stopped. What's going on under our feet? Well, rate of reaction increases, so it goes up. Give the reason why, because we are approaching the ideal pH at which the enzyme is working, there is no disruption to the enzyme's shape. So again, we have given three things. We have uh, told or shown the change in pH. We've explained the effect of that. The rate of activity increases and given a reason why. Now we're at the top of the mountain, so we need to explain what's happening here. So again, you state what's happening with the pH. So when the pH is equal to 7, what's happening under your feet? Rate is at a maximum. The rate of activity is working best. Why is that? Well, the reason is that there's no disruption to the enzyme's shape. So the enzyme's shape is intact. So again, we have our three reasons for our graph interpretation. We are showing the change in pH or what's happening with the pH. We are explaining the effect of that on the rate of reaction and we're giving a reason why. Continuing with our interpretation or our hill walking, we will then go from a pH of 7 to a pH of approximately 9.5. So from a pH of 7 to 9.5, What's happening under your feet? Well, the rate of reaction is decreasing, so the rate is going down. And can you give a reason why? Well, the rate of reaction is falling because the pH changes are disrupting the enzyme's shape. So the enzyme is becoming denatured. So again, for interpretation, we are showing the examiner the effect of the pH on the rate of activity. Finally, we are continuing our interpretation or finishing our hill walking journey. So from a pH of 9.5 to 14, what's happening under your feet? Well, there's no rate of reaction. And why is there no rate of reaction? Because the enzymes are all denatured. So in other words, we have interpreted our graph. Before we look at the effect of temperature on enzyme activity, what can we remember about temperature and chemical reactions? Chemical reactions occur due to collisions between the reactants. When the temperature is low, there is a low collision rate and there is a slow reaction rate. When the temperature is high, there is a high collision rate and there is a faster reaction rate. We need to keep this in mind when we want to look at the effect of temperature on enzyme activity. So what is the effect of temperature on enzymes? Well, as we've just said, the lower the temperature, the slower enzymes will work. The higher the temperature, the faster enzymes work. 
When the temperature is too high, however, the enzyme changes shape and stops working. An enzyme with a changed shape is denatured. Let's look at the graph of the effect of temperature on enzyme activity. Everyone in the audience needs to understand this graph. The temperature is along the bottom or along the x-axis. The rate of enzyme activity is up the side or along the y-axis. When we look at this graph, we can see that the enzymes are working best for humans at a temperature of approximately here, 37 degrees Celsius, which is human body temperature. When the temperature increases, the rate of the reaction increases. When the temperature is too high, above 37, the rate of the reaction decreases because the enzyme shape is denatured. We see the same pattern for plant enzymes. Here, however, the maximum temperature or plant enzymes work best on this graph at approximately 28 degrees Celsius. For those of you able for a bit more, let's interpret this graph in a bit more detail. Let's go hill walking. Where am I? Well, at zero degrees Celsius. What is the ground like under my feet? Well, there is no rate of reaction. Give the reason why. Well, there's no rate of reaction because water in the cells is locked up as ice, so enzymes cannot work. So the cytoplasm is frozen solid, if you like. There is no medium for chemical reactions. Moving on. Going hill walking. Where do I go? From zero degrees Celsius to top of the mountain, 37 degrees Celsius. What's happening under my feet? Well, rate of reaction is increasing. What's the reason why? Well, there's an increased collision rate. And when you increase the collision rate of reactants, then there will be an increase in activity. So we'll increase collision rate. And that explains why we get an increase in reaction. Now we're at the top of the mountain. So where am I? So I'm at 37 degrees Celsius. What's happening under my feet? Reaction rate at a maximum. And give me the reason why. Well, the enzymes work best at 37 degrees Celsius. This is the temperature at which most of their shapes are intact. Continuing with our interpretation and hill walking. From, where did I go? 37 degrees Celsius to 62 degrees Celsius approximately. What happened under my feet? The reaction rate decreased or went down. Why is that? Well, the enzymes are losing their three-dimensional shape so they're no longer functional. Where am I now? Well, at 62 degrees Celsius. What's happening under my feet? No reaction rate. Give me the reason why. All the enzymes are denatured. So they've all lost their shape and they're now non-functional. So following my hill walking trip, we have now succeeded in interpreting the graph. So there you have it. Make sure that you are able to draw all of these graphs, label the axis properly and understand what they represent. Practice in a jotter. Now that we've reached the end of our lesson, have we achieved our objective? Can you explain the effect of pH and temperature range on enzyme activity?